Welcome to the Cocktail Spirit from Small Screen Network. I'm your host, Robert Hess. In 1902, the Algonquin Hotel opened up. It's probably best known for these dinner parties that Dorothy Parker, amongst others, were taking and uh, playing part in there. Um, it's also somewhat well known for a drink called the Algonquin Cocktail. That's what we're going to take a look at today. Now, when I look up the recipe for Algonquin, I find a few different versions of it. And I've been having a hard time identifying what the original version was. So what I did is I actually contacted the Algonquin Hotel to find out what version of the recipe are they serving if you were to go into their establishment and ask for it today. And that's what we're going to prepare. The recipe we're going to make today is one and a half ounces of whiskey and three quarter ounce of dry vermouth and pineapple juice. Now, if you watch the show, you see me use a variety of different jiggers. Um, here are the ones I use the most. Uh, the OXO jigger as well as this jigger set from Progressive, uh, which snaps together like that with a little magnet on the bottom of it. It's also got nice little graduated marks on the inside so you can see what's going on. Um, especially, it's got a three-quarter ounce mark in it, which the OXO unfortunately does not have. The OXO's number is a little bit bigger and easier to read, especially as my eyesight starts failing on me, uh, than the Progressive ones does. But both of these are really good for home bartenders but not for bartenders in the business that might need to be a little bit faster. They take a little bit more fussiness to carefully watch how you're getting to the lines. A real bartender is going to use the classic jiggers you see here. Now, in many places where, you know, kitchen stores, you're going to find jiggers like this. One of the problems you run into is they're not listed what the measures are. They'll say a, a jigger and a half a jigger on one side or the other. So it's very important to make sure you buy jiggers that are marked exactly what the measures are. And you've maybe tested at home to make sure they actually get the jiggers right. The sizes you want to get could run the gamut of everything. And you see all sorts of different things from one and a half on one side to two on the other and so forth. The sizes that I like using are two ounce, one ounce, and three quarter, one half. With these measures, you can basically make most drinks. There's gonna be some that kind of fuss around. Uh, this one's gonna fuss around a little bit just because I've gotta use two measures rather than the one I'd use for the OXO. Let's take a look how it works. So I'm gonna use one and a half ounces of rye whiskey. So just fill the top and pour, one ounce. half ounce. And we use three quarter ounce of dry vermouth, which now we have a three quarter on this side. And three quarter ounce of pineapple juice. Of course, you want to make sure you use the unsweetened pineapple juice or fresh squeeze if you can, uh, which is pineapple is kind of rather hard to squeeze. Now, with pineapple juice, since it is an opaque ingredient, you might want to think you want to shake this instead of stirring it. The problem with pineapple juice is the enzymes cause it to foam up a little bit more than orange juice or lime juice does. So I prefer to stir pineapple juice unless you want the foam rather than shake it. Strain this into our cocktail glass. And one of the problems with pineapple juice is quite often it kind of overpowers with its flavor a lot of cocktails. And so I'm expecting this to have a fairly strong pineapple flavor to it. But let's see how the rye whiskey kind of can balance against that overpowering that the pineapple juice can do sometimes. You can smell the fruitiness of the pineapple. Now, if you notice, there were no sweet ingredients going on here. We had whiskey, dry vermouth, and unsweetened pineapple juice. So this is a fairly dry style drink. Doesn't have a lot of sweetness coming in. The pineapple and the whiskey are there, and you can kind of pull out both of them separately. Um, it's an interesting drink. 
Um, it may not be everyone's ball of wax, uh, but I think it makes a great drink to remind yourself what drinks were like back in the, the Algonquin Hotel back in the early 1900s. Probably they served this during Prohibition in certain spots. So there we have the Algonquin cocktail. Mm -hmm.